There are already a few videos relating to how slip ring motors work. But this is mine. The difference being is I just wanted to get to the point without going into too much depth. But more importantly, to create a video that anyone can understand. This video is brought to you by a Mr. Matt and Mr. Che video of a vintage lift which uses a slip ring motor. And this video is here to explain what's so special about it. The main advantage of a slip ring motor is at startup. They demand less current and have more torque. But let's start at the basics. A stator goes around the outside of the motor. In the middle is called the rotor, which is the main part of the motor that rotates. Attached to the end of the rotor is a gearbox, linked to a giant wheel which moves the lift up and down. The windings on the outside are connected to the three phases that are available to most industrial buildings. These are usually colour coded red, yellow and blue for each phase. Between them are voltages that add up to 415 volts AC. The AC cycle in the UK is 50 Hz. So in effect, this creates a rotating electrical field that goes around 50 times per second, far faster than in this animation. To get the rotor attracted to the stator's magnetic field in the first place, we also need windings. These bars or windings connect at either end, usually giving the whole thing the appearance of a cage. These bars hold some of the magnetic field and are pulled around. This is a simple induction motor, but as you'll see later, with a slip ring motor, we need to tap into each of these windings. At one end, all the windings are connected together, but something very different happens at the other end. All the windings connect together into groups of three and then exit the motor and are wired back to the control cabinet. The bars or windings are presented here as these symbols. A simple induction motor does a good job, but there are other factors to consider. To start such a motor, especially large motors with heavy loads attached to them, require a lot of current to get them going. A simple induction motor could use the star delta configuration to help, but a slip ring motor does it differently. The 50 Hz rotating field from the stator is too fast for the rotor to lock onto. This means that the rotor will have to build up speed to match the 50 times per second AC cycle that the stator is providing. Whilst it builds up speed, the rotating field spins way ahead of the rotor. In this condition, the stator doesn't have a lot of grip of the rotor until it reaches enough speed to be almost the same. A slip ring motor has something extra. Believe it or not, slip rings. There are three slip rings. Each slip ring connects to a group of windings on the rotor. The slip rings are used to connect them back to the control cabinet. Since this is a moving part against a stationary part, slip rings are always subject to wear and tear. Remember that if we were to connect all these slip ring connections together, we arrive back at a traditional motor. But here is the clever bit. In the control cabinet, if we connect a resistance between each winding, this stops one winding sharing its energy with the other windings, which would happen in a cage configuration. This gives the rotor an extra kick and it has the effect of helping to align a slower spinning rotor to a faster spinning magnetic field from the stator. Once the rotor is spinning, having the resistors connected is no longer a benefit and they are no longer required. A contactor in the control cabinet now removes the resistors by placing a short circuit over them. With the three windings now connected together, the rotor now behaves like a conventional cage which is the best configuration for a motor at full speed. Watch the relay sequence in here. Yep. The motor is not running as it should. The relays should have three prominent steps.
Once the stator has power, the rotor is ready to turn. Initially, the windings are not formed in a circuit. One and a half seconds later, the RC contactor connects all windings together, but forcing them through three resistors. This limits the amount of current being shared from winding to winding, creating the torque or magnetic grip advantage to get the motor running. One and a half seconds later, RC1 contactor creates a short circuit before the resistors, shorting them all out. This creates the conventional caged motor configuration for normal running. The last video relating to this 1920s goods lift goes through this schematic, which was left in the motor room. As we make our way around the diagram, we end up at the slip ring motor and the contactors that create the resistance buildup. I take a lot of time and effort to bring you quality, interesting videos. I'm all about quality, not quantity. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, please consider subscribing to the Mr. Matt and Mr. Che channel.